Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange. Today I want to share with you five subgenres of horror that I don't usually like. Now, of course, there are always exceptions, and I'm going to be sharing five books that are part of these subgenres, but actually did work for me. And this is a follow up to a video I did talking about five of my favorite subgenres. I'm going to do this one in no particular order. All that being said, let's get started. So let's get the really obvious one out of the way first, because if you have watched my channel for any length of time, you've heard me say again and again that I don't really like haunted house stories. And I think it's the fact that they tend to be very predictable. They always follow this common narrative. And I just don't really care about old creaky buildings. I don't find the stories to be scary. I don't find them to be fresh. And it's gotten to the point that I very rarely accept haunted house stories for review, and I just don't really pick them up. However, there are exceptions, and one of them which worked really well for me was 12 Nights at Rotter House by J.W. Oker. And I think the reason that this one worked so well was because it's very self-aware of the genre. If you don't know, this is a story of a journalist who decides to spend 13 nights in a house that is possibly haunted. And he goes into that house knowing the tropes of the genre and basically goes about fulfilling those. So he lets his phone die, he plays with a Ouija board, and so much of the story is filled with pop culture references to haunted house movies and books because the character and the author are oh so aware of the classic haunted house narrative. So I think this one worked for me because I felt like it was written for people like myself that know the subgenre in and out, know these stories and are just tired of the usual thing. And so this one almost pokes fun at the genre, which is the reason I enjoyed it so much. It was funny, it made me laugh, and at the same time, it actually managed to be creepy. So while I don't always love haunted house stories, I need to remain open to them because there definitely are exceptions like this one that were just so much fun. The next subgenre that I don't really like is vampires. Now, I know a lot of people are turned off by vampires as creatures because of urban fantasy and books like Twilight. That's not my problem per se. I recognize that there definitely are vampires in literature that are creepy and dark and monstrous, but I just don't love them as a concept. I much prefer other kinds of monsters and I've just never been attracted to vampire stories. I think because as creatures, they tend to be very seductive and suave, and it's just not my thing. So there are lots of vampire stories that I've read that I appreciate, but they just don't tend to be favorites. I have read Dracula, and that one I thought was pretty good, but the one particularly that I really loved was Fledgling by Octavia Butler, and I think that this one works so well for me because while it is a vampire story, Story. It's a vampire story with a focus on science fiction, which is different because most of these horror vampire stories lean into the side of fantasy, specifically urban fantasy, which I don't personally love, but this one was all science fiction. There is a scientific reason why vampires exist in this world, and of course Octavia E. Butler brings in her own diversity, and you get to see vampires that are a little bit different and actually darker skinned because they have been genetically transformed in order to be able to exist out in the sunlight. And I just thought it was so fascinating because it was actually different. So you're going to see a theme with this list here that I enjoy books that subvert these tropes and kind of play outside of the lines of what you normally see in these subgenres. Next, I want to talk about literary horror. And to be fair, I don't hate this genre, but I'm very cautious when I go into it. I do consider myself first and foremost to be a genre reader because I do need a level of plotting and narrative drive in order to enjoy a story for the most part. So often literary stories can just be a little bit dry, they might go over my head, and I don't always love them. But as you have seen in this video, there are always exceptions 
exceptions to the rule, and one of my all-time favorite stories, which I've come to accept as a horror story, is very literary, and that of course is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid, which is a story of a young couple that go on a road trip on a cold winter night to go visit his family, and she is possibly thinking of ending the relationship. And this book just surprised me in the best possible way. And again, I liked it so much because I went in thinking it was gonna be a thriller and it was just something else. And it just was so well written. The writing is incredible. It really made me appreciate why people gush about someone's writing. And the story itself had enough of a plot to keep me hooked and it was full of suspense and I found it creepy. And at the same time, it's very literary. It's very heavy on some themes that I can't talk about for spoilery reasons, but there are so many reasons to love this book. And if I didn't pick up this book because I knew it had that literary aspect, I wouldn't be kicking myself because as I mentioned, it's one of my all time favorite stories. I absolutely love it and it's definitely made me more open to other literary horror books. Along a similar note, I'm also very cautious to pick up Southern Gothic horror. And it's not so much that I hate it as much as I don't understand what Southern Gothic means. And that comes from my roots as a Canadian. I have only been to one place in the States and that is Seattle, which if I'm honest is basically Southern Vancouver. So I don't have a really good understanding of what the southern states are like. I don't read a lot of gothic horror in general. And so when people ask me for recommendations for the subgenre, I really come out blank. However, I often forget that one of my favorite horror books is technically considered southern gothic. And that of course is Beneath by Christy Demeester, which is a story of a snake handling church and a young girl that gets bitten and the story just gets weird and creepy and while this is southern gothic the reasons that i like this book are not the setting because again i don't necessarily connect to that setting but i like that it's so unapologetic it's very dark and in some ways very perverse because the pastor at this church is having unpure thoughts about this young girl and you get to see a very sexualized story that is in some ways very uncomfortable, but there's so many reasons that I love it. So this is a book that fits this genre, but I love for other reasons. So I need to be open to books with that setting. I just don't personally connect with Southern Gothic. I would love someone to explain to me what it is because I don't really know, but I know that I love this book. So again, I need to consider other Southern Gothic stories and maybe try them out for myself. And last, I wanna talk about post-apocalyptic horror. And the reason I don't always love this subgenre is the fact that these stories tend to be really similar, really repetitive, and I feel like I have read the same story over and over again. There is always some kind of disease or outbreak, some cataclysmic event, and then there is a group of people that are on the run, going on some kind of road trip across America, trying to get to a safe space. And usually they run into other people that are often worse than the outbreak itself, and it really shows the dark side of humanity. I find these stories to be very repetitive, but also very grim and depressing. And while I do read a lot of dark fiction, I don't always like depressing stories. I do read for entertainment and fun, and I just don't always feel like being depressed if I'm honest. However, one of my favorite horror books, a favorite horror classic in fact, is I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. This of course is the story of a man who believes that he is the lone survivor after an outbreak has turned most people into these zombie-like vampires. And this book is certainly depressing and dark, but I really connected with the main character. He's very unlikable, but he's a huge skeptic and tries to find a scientific reason behind the fact that these people are turned into vampires. And I really connected with that narrative. I was just gripped into the story. It's very isolating. There's very little action, which is also quite different than post-apocalyptic horror, which tends to be very very exciting, very fast paced, but it was slow and it just held my attention. I was just gripped in and I really enjoyed it. So this was a surprise for me. It came out of nowhere. I didn't think I'd love it as much as I did. And I would definitely recommend it to anyone who is looking for some post-apocalyptic horror that is a little bit different.
So that is it for this video. Hopefully it was interesting to see some of my least favorite subgenres when it comes to horror and get some recommendations for books that you might enjoy if you also share my unpopular opinions of not necessarily loving these subgenres. As well, I would love to get more recommendations for books that fall within these subgenres that subvert the tropes and you think that I might enjoy. So please give me some recommendations. I would love to hear from all of you. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you soon in another video. Okay, bye-bye.